for joining. Remember to hit that thumbs up button below. Your support really makes a difference. It helps us reach more people. You can also benefit from the messages shared. We hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Real Relationship Talk, the podcast hosted by yours truly, Teresa Young, Relationship Master Coach, where we have open, non-judgmental, heart-to-heart conversations about love, self-love, self-care, dating and relationships. And for this week's episode, I am being joined by the amazing Alessia Chaco. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Teresa. Thank you. I'm uh, very happy to be here today and thank you for inviting me. It's such an honor to be here. And I really love the work that you're doing and you know, like uh, people you're interviewing, there is so much information and it's so valuable, you know, what you're sharing with the people. So I really, really love it. Thank oh. you for, for having me over. Oh, <laughs> here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alessia, because I'm just going to share with the listeners a bit more about who you are and what you're doing. And it's such an honour and privilege to have you. And thank you for your kind words. Thank you. So, Alessia is a certified neurographical instructor and coach from the Institute of Psychology of Art. Her journey into neurographical began when she faced the frustration of several failed relationships, unfulfilling work, and a complete disconnection from her inner self. She found herself at a point of uncertainty searching for a way to escape from an unsatisfying life. It was during this pivotal moment that she encountered Neurographica and experienced a profound shift that would alter the course of her life. Neurographica isn't just an art, it's a transformative method, blending creativity, various schools of psychology and mindfulness. It helps her discover her true passions and potential, leading her to a joyful, authentic life. Her own experiences have inspired her to help people who, like her former self, feel trapped in a cycle of frustration and longing. It is her heartfelt belief that everyone deserves the opportunity to discover their authentic selves and find clarity in life, which is why she's committed to empowering individuals in their quest for clarity, purpose and a strong self-connection enabling them to unlock limitless possibilities and achieve any goal they desire. Whether it's relationships, career, finances, health, wealth or personal growth, she invites you to join her on the transformative journey towards self-discovery, self-belief and purpose. Wow, Alessia. That is such a wonderful (laughs) introduction and it really sounds like you've had a journey. So for everybody who is tapped into this conversation today, please, can you share a bit more about your life that led you to doing the great work that you do now? Uh, yeah, sure, uh, sure, I will do that. And thank you for introducing me. (laughs) And uh, yeah, like, you know, like, I think like all of us, you know, yeah, I've had my own journey that led me to what I do right now. And uh, um, what I didn't uh, mention, uh, you know, like in that introduction is that <gasps> actually I have a background from uh, from finance and accounting and, you know, like I worked for big corporations, uh, you know, for many years and um, I had, uh, you know, very uh, good jobs, you know, like, you know, well paid, you know, like I, um, you know, I could afford, you know, like uh, things in life I wanted to have, you know, like it's... Uh, you know, like everything, except yeah. for one thing, you know, I was very unhappy with what I did, you know, like I, it gave me no joy, absolutely no joy whatsoever in life. And, uh, you know, when I would speak about those things with my friends or my family, so like I, I would be hearing, you know, those things, uh, like I think, you know, most of us here, yeah, like, you know, but you're so lucky. You have so many things in life, you know, like you, you have a good job, you know, like you have like things you need, you can afford to buy things, you can afford travels, you know, like everything. What are you complaining about? You know, like all people live, like a lot of people live like that. And, you know, there are so many people who would be like, uh, who would like to live the life you live. So like, what's the problem? And I felt like, you know, uh, that uh, there was like with, with the very close people, I couldn't find, you know, that understanding, you know, like that, you know, it's not just about that, you know, like I'm, it's not just because I'm so lucky that I have all those things and I worked for those things. It was, you know, 
I, uh, I worked, you know, to like, you know, on my education, you know, like I studied, you know, like it was, uh, it was a plan, you know, like how I would achieve those things. So, and, and I came to that goal, you know, and it was perfect. And, you know, for a very long time, uh, actually, I um, uh, made those deals with myself, contract, if you like. So then I would, uh, at that moment, I, I even had no idea what I was doing, but I was using those uh, NLP techniques, you know, intuitively. Yeah, reframing okay. I was mm. saying to myself all right so you do you have a good job so you have a good pay you have financial freedom you can afford things you can afford travels so and okay like you don't have you know like you're not happy and uh, you don't like what you do but you have this you know and you know it's kind of you know for me like I ref I was reframing all of this so like and um, let's say like you know um I would uh, I would be living according to that contract uh, I made with myself. <laughs> so this is the deal. So this is how I live. You know, like um, I get this instead of this. So and you know, like uh, at certain moment, you know, I would have to renew those contracts because okay. you know, like, <laughs> because you know, let's say like after one year, I would uh, I would start feeling again. You know, like this, huh? uh, like you know, I would get this uh, feeling of uh, yawning that. For, for something more, like, you know, I want something more. I'm so unfulfilled with what I do. So yeah. it has no meaning to me. Mm -hmm. So then I would uh, go again and start reframing those things. And, um, and it worked for me for a very long time, you know, for many, many years until it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, the, the last job you know, I had, uh, it was a good job, you know, like, you know, as well, you know, well paid. But, you know, like I reached that moment when those contracts didn't work with me anymore. So, and then I, um, I said to myself, you know what? I even don't need money anymore. So it became that it came to that point when I was saying, I don't need all, <laughs> all that money that I'm getting from that job. I need, I don't need anything of that. You know, like I just want to have uh, happiness. You know, like I want to be, uh, like you know, I want, um, I want to feel joy. You know, with in what I do, and you know, for um, also it was one component in you know in my life. And uh, on the other side, you know, there was in the relationship component. Yes. And there, like, there was its own, uh, like, I had my own story. So, like, uh, let's say, like, uh, several failed relationships. And I was getting, you know, like, uh, in one after another, and it was not working. And, uh, you know, like, let's say, and, and here was the, like, you know, I was facing that equation. On the one hand, you know, like, good jobs, you know, well paid, very unhappy with what I do. On the other hand, <laughs> several failed relationships, this plus this equaled at some point therapy for me. Okay. <laughs> so um, luckily it was therapy because, you know, like I know like that for some people, you know, they, they, they continue living in, uh, you know, like in the, like, you know, this plus this and it equals something else. But, you know, like I chose to go like, you know, to this path, you know, I chose you know, to get into therapy to understand. I really wanted to understand what is not working for me. So yeah. like, why is uh, like, you know, this is not, you know, like I have, uh, I'm unfulfilled in what I do in life. And, you know, like this relationship stuff is also not working for me. And, uh, you know, like when I came to the therapist and like I came with those two topics and we started uh, working, of course, you know, like I had to choose one, you know, like that I would start with. Uh, I chose the relationships, but, you know, somehow it turned, you know, like into anyway, like, you know, uh, into, the, into the topic of professional, you know, passion. So we focused on that one uh, and I started developing, you know, like in this uh, area. So then uh, I got uh, into new studies, you know, started studying psychology, like coaching, yes. um, you know, like I went through different, you know, um, energy treatments, you know, like all that stuff, you know, like I was, like, I was uh, you know, like I would say, I was devouring all that, you know, like I wanted to get that knowledge. I felt like, you know, it's something that I've been missing in my life. I really, really liked it. Yeah. But the relationship stuff, you know, it was still, you know, on this side, you know, like mm -hmm. I just let it go, like still getting into like, you know, one relationship after another that didn't work, yeah. you know, like I was failing. But, you know, like this other component of the equation that was started, you know, to work, you know, better. So like I get, I started getting, you know, the satisfaction at least, you know, I was still doing, you know, the job, you know, I didn't like, but at least you know, I had something that started giving me the joy. So like, I felt like I got on my path, even though I didn't know like where it was leading to. Yeah. And um, there, uh, 
I, I found myself, you know, at some point uh, in one relationship. So which was, uh, it was a very short relationship, but it had a very big impact on me. So when relationship ended, I don't remember even like, you know, how, like at what point, um, I couldn't, con uh, I couldn't stop thinking about that person. Even, uh, um, even though like it was, uh, like I explained to myself, you know, like, you know, why, you know, like I'm thinking about that person, you know, like I went through the process of, you know, like breakup process and such, but it was still, you know, he was still in my head, you know, all the time. And at some point, uh, that thought became, you know, obsessive for me. Like I, um, I caught myself, you know, like I noticed that you know, I was thinking about that person all the time. So I noticed, you know, like when I would wake up in the morning, that was the first thing I was thinking about. It was just, you know, this automatic switch. Mm. And, you know, that train of thoughts would be running, you know, like, like on schedule. Yeah. And then it would be during the day and it would be in the evening and all the time. And it lasted for about, uh, I think, 15 months. It was a very long time. I was exhausted. So I was just exhausted because, you know, like I was giving so much, like all my energy was flowing into there. And the only thing that I wanted is to get rid of that, you know. And then I went again to the therapist and I explained the situation. I was like, I need help. You, you know, like, I, I think I'm going crazy. Like, you know, I, I want to stop thinking about, you know, that person. Yeah. So, and then, uh, uh, and then, you know, like, yeah, we, we try to like, you know, to go through the process, you know, like again, you know, like analytically explain, mm -hmm. you know, like why that happens, you know, like what led to that and everything, but it was still uh, like, you know, it, he was still there in my head. <laughs> so, and that's, uh, yeah, like, well, I think I it's so relatable. About, yeah. <laughs> so, and, um. Uh, and then, you know, like a colleague of mine recommended uh, to try Neurographica. I didn't know what it was. And uh, I was thinking, okay, like, you know, well, fine, let's see what it is. Uh, so, like, I read about it. And then, uh, as skeptic as I am, I thought to myself, you know, this is nonsense, as if some kind of drawing is going yeah. to help me. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no that, that, that can't be true. But then, uh, you know, luckily, my curiosity has always been, you know, bigger than my skepticism. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I told him, I said, like, okay, like, you know, fine. If nothing else helped, you may as well try this one, this yes. method. You know, like, you know, it's not going to hurt you. So, and um, I signed up for a session, uh, uh, like, neurographica session. And um, I was surprised, you know, like, I was going through that session, you know, it was easy for me. And um, I didn't uh, notice, you know, that much. It, uh, it was it puts it put me in a very meditative state of mind, you know, like I was relaxing, you know, like while I was doing those things, and I was thinking, well, it's it's nice, yeah. Uh, but then what happened the day after was very interesting. I woke up in the morning, and I was prepared for the train of thoughts, yeah, yes. <laughs> to to set uh, to go on schedule as usual. And it did, but only for a few seconds. And after that, my eyes made a very abrupt zigzag movement and the thought was interrupted. And then I thought, hmm, that's new. Okay. <laughs> this is new, so new and interesting. But again, as skeptic as I am, mm -hmm. I didn't believe in the power of that method and what happened. Still yeah. not believing, okay, like, you know, that uh, this can do something to me. That I deliberate uh, during the day, I uh, intentionally was coming back to that thought. And I was testing what's going to happen. Like if I continue thinking about that person, mm -hmm. like, I, like I did, you know, like in the end, you know, it, it, like, you know, he stayed with me for like 15 months in my head, you know, <laughs> it was yeah. difficult to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, anyway, so I was uh, coming back to that thought, but the result was the same. My eyes made that abrupt zigzag movement and the thought was interrupted as if the paths were breaking. And then I was saying, okay, this is something. I need to figure out, you know, what it is. So, but the therapist recommended me to, uh, to have two more sessions, you know, like on this to, to fix the results. So okay. I did that uh, and the thought left me forever. I never thought about that person again. So, and then I thought, you know, okay, this is powerful, but then I thought, you know, like, you know what, you know what I need to do? I need to go and find out how that works. Okay. Because, 
because it made me very curious. I wanted, I was thinking to myself, you know, there should be an explanation behind that. There should be a process that explains, you know, what happens. Okay. That, and and this is how I got into the studies, you know, like this, how I got, you know, like into neurographica. And as soon as I got into like studies, you know, I realized this is what I want to do. This is what I want to use, you know, like working with people because, you know, like it's, it was so powerful and I uh, like, um, I don't know, like it, um, it was amazing. And at the same time, you know, like I, it was so interesting for me, like, you yeah. know, to get into this field. And I felt so passionate about what, uh, what I was studying. And I, I immediately started, you know, ask, started asking people, my friends, you know, first, oh, would you like to practice that with me? Like, you know, there, there is this method, you know, like, let's, uh, let's practice it and see how it works in you. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so and uh, from the very like in the first um, weeks of my studies, and you know, I became very very passionate about that. So like and when people come to me and like you know and uh, or like you know they ask me about that method, so which is a bit like you know difficult to explain what it is. Like you know you really need to practice it, like you know to see what it is. So and uh, and then they become okay, like you know a drawing, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, what yes. was going to do that for me? And I, I totally understand them. I tell them, you know, like, I, I totally get it. You know, I was the same. You know, like I, it's so easy for me to relate. You know, yes. <laughs> to their yeah. experience because I was, uh, I was uh, skeptical as well about that. But from being skeptical, I became very passionate about what I do. And when uh, those two equations, you know, like then I, uh, what I told about it in the beginning, you know, the. Um, the work stuff, you know, like something I didn't like to do and the relationships and those two, like, you know, I brought to the therapy mm. and one led me to another. So like, you know, that uh, stuff, uh, that, that part of the equation with the relationships, you know, yes. number of failed relationships uh, led me to something I wanted to do in life, you know, to my professional passion in life. Mm. So, um, so this is uh, it's a bit long of a long story, but uh, you know, like this is how I came to 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 what I'm doing now. Ah. <laughs> Thank you so much for that share and going into the depth that you've gone into because people listening to this are going to resonate, particularly when it comes to those repeated thoughts that we can have over somebody when we've had a breakup or if we're in a relationship. That train can constantly be there and what is so incredible about your journey is the fact how quickly this process was literally overnight like a transformative process that you unpacked overnight and for those people who are listening because you spoke about it being a graphic a drawing they're probably really curious what does the process of neurographica look like so when you start working with somebody what does that actually look like it's very different, you know, from person to person, uh, because uh, people come, you know, with absolutely like you know, different backgrounds and, you know, like different levels of, uh, you know, their personal growth. Yeah. Uh, but of course, it, you know, the good thing, you know, about Neurographica, you know, like it, um, uh, like I, I should start with the, with the thing, you know, like with the main asset of Neurographica, the main asset of Neurographica is the Neurographic line. And it's not just, you know, like a straight line or like, you know, just curvy line um, or like it's uh, there is a technique of how uh, we draw the neurographic line. So, And this is something that needs to be practiced. But what neurographic line does is that it breaks the patterns that we have in our brain on specific topics. Oh. So uh, it's some people would um, misunderstand it a little bit, and I think that this is the intuitive moment of the of the hand when we begin to draw the neurographic line. But it's actually it's the opposite. It's the counterintuitive movement of the of the hand. So because you know, like at every moment, you know, like when we start moving the hand and making you know the neurographic line, we consciously need to change the movement of the hand. Uh -huh. So, like, you know, so the, because, you know, like when we start moving and, you know, like we, uh, the hand, you know, like on the paper and we mm -hmm. feel like the hand wants to go like in the right side. You know, yes. I consciously need to change it and go to a different side. So, uh, so then um, and then st people start reporting, uh, you know, saying, oh, like, you know, I feel nauseous. I feel irritated. I feel like, you know, like you no know, different kind of things. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, and this is how our brain reacts 
to what we're doing on the paper because we start breaking, you know, the patterns yes. that we already have in the brain. And of course, the the one of the things that brain need, uh, does for us is, is it keeps us safe. So, and keeping us safe means, you know, like different things, you know, for all of us, but basically like it wants to keep us in what we already know and yes. what we already have, because even though we think it's not working for us, but we know exactly how to be in that uh, state we're not like that, for example, uh, let's say like I went through uh, like you know, several, you know, um, breakups mm-hmm. uh, and then, you know, like, yeah, not something I do, I like, but I knew exactly how to get out of there because I already had the program, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> and, you know, like, and this is the program, you know, like when we want uh, that I've been running on. So, I mean, I had my secondary gains there mm-hmm. and the secondary gains were, was personal growth transformation so and this is why like you know, and i didn't understand you know that program you know like until i got into therapy and i was going through all that stuff so i was running that program because you know like this is how i was getting to my self-development to mm-hmm. self-growth i needed to get into a relationship it would break up so then i would start doing things you know like learning new stuff you know like doing okay. something new so like uh, and this that was the program i was running on but of course there are different ways to do that mm-hmm. so and then when people come, for example, you know, with their uh, problems, you know, like, and their, like, you know, whatever issues they have in, uh, I don't know, finances, uh, I don't know, relationships, you know, like of any kind or like anything, anything else, you know, like health or like whatever. So there is a program there already in the brain. So uh, on how they're running, you know, they like, you know, things in life. So what we are doing, you know, with a neurographic line, you know, like we need, first of all, to actualize all the uh, neural connections you know people have on that topic okay in question so and uh, in neurographic unlike in other practices for example um we um like in other practices you know you, when people you know let's say um actualize topic or like you know work in a topic you know they go to like let's say um positive affirmations i want to mm-hmm. have a successful career there here and there and there so this is not how we work in neurographica. In neurographica, we define topic in one, uh, like you know, sometimes in one word. So uh-huh. say like re- relationships, or like you know, fine, you know, if you, you, we can just say like relationships, okay. Like if you want to specify, you can specify romantic relationship, right? Uh-huh. And then we start, you know, activating all the neural connections we have on that topic. And we did in a written form, you know, like we do some, uh, you know, written exercise, like a very quick one. So, um, and then people discover, you know, like that uh, the associations that come up, you know, with uh, with the relationship are so vast, you know, like it's like you know everything. Like, well, uh, we need to write down, you know, the like words, you know, that there's an exercise, you know, we uh, I said, you know, clock for two minutes, and people write anything that comes to their mind, you know, like okay. in, in two minutes. Um. And uh, and then, you know, from there we start analyzing. Okay, so what came up? So, but if, for example, people say like, you know, um, I want to have a successful, like, you know, loving uh, romantic relationship with this and this in person, what we exclude from this equation is that there are a lot of other things uh-huh. out, outside of this. So, and uh, when we focus our brain only on that, a particular thing because mm-hmm. we're not going to get to the bottom of what's actually holding you back from achieving what you want so in neurographica we take only one word usually as a topic and then we start working from there so because then uh there is like there is more information we activate in the brain and then there is more and and on a deeper level we can transform you know those neural connections we have so it's um it's a very deep process uh just to like you know uh mention the base of it like i'm not going to go into the depth because it's it's a bit of uh like you know it's a topic for a lecture (laughs) but you know i i I will just mention that uh, neurographica is based on um uh, is built on the pyramid of consciousness it's called so and uh when uh we um in neurographica we um we have a, a fundamental algorithm so, and by algorithm, uh, it's meant a step-by-step process. 
So whatever we do, like with each and uh, individual with individual in your Africa process, so we go step by step. Uh, we start, you know, like from uh, actualizing the topic, something that is like you know always in our head, you know, like something we think about, you know, like all the time. And with each step we follow in the process, we go deeper and deeper, like on on a very deep level, uh, where we transform. And then we take, you know, those transformations and we bring them to the top of the pyramid to their our actual, uh, like, you know, what's, uh, what we want to have, you know, like uh, at this moment, like, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's a very deep process. It's time demanding. Um, but uh, people do not even notice how a time passes, you know, when, because they go so deep in that process and, you know, like they immerse in their, uh, like you know, their thoughts and their like images, you know, like emotions, and uh, so and suddenly, oh, like and it's been two hours already. Oh my god, you know, I haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, like there is um, to keep, uh, like you know, because let's say on the one hand, what we do, we try to break, uh, not we try, like you know, yeah, we, we are breaking the uh, the um, the connections in the brain that are uh, like neural connections that are not working for us. Mm. So, but uh, and we do it, you know, with the help of uh, neurographic lines uh, and, uh, um, and and other uh, and other ways in um, in neurographica. But uh, the neurographic line is the main tool. So we're consciously, you know, pushing ourselves uh, ourselves from uh, out of those comfort zones, you know, like out of creating new neural connections, but. To keep us in the process, you know, like focused, we follow this algorithm all the time. So, and th this is like, you know, two sides of the process. On one hand, you always push yourself out of the comfort zone. And on the other hand, you know, like, you know, to, to have, you know, some stability and, you know, like we follow those steps in the algorithm. So, yeah. how we do that. So, um, if I, explain myself uh, you know clearly <laughs> oh absolutely that's yes, fascinating and for those people who are on dating apps for example that word algorithm is probably jumping out at them <laughs> so much <laughs> algorithm is not in our favor i'm not getting the match what i love about this is that this is your own personal algorithm that can actually give you maybe the dating and relationship success that you want once you start working on yourself and yes you talked about it maybe being quite time intense but maybe two hours or so in the grand scheme of life and the outcomes that you can get out of it proportionately it doesn't feel like it. there's so much you no know, benefit out of it the opportunity cost is far greater than actually maybe not giving it a go and something when you was talking there I totally resonated because sometimes our nervous system will fear what isn't normal and natural to us so breaking mm -hmm. state for example and doing things differently it's probably going to send people into that you spoke about nausea maybe not feeling so great so in those moments is there a way that you help people to regulate their nervous system is that part of the process too yes absolutely uh because uh at each step of the pro because i'm the i'm the uh, since i'm the instructor uh of the process like now i'm I'm guiding people through that process. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, at any moment, you know, I'm asking people questions, you know, like, okay, what are you feeling at this mm -hmm. moment? So like, can you, uh, can you please share, you know, your feelings and uh, um, like, you know, okay, like, you know, you're feeling that, uh, is there, are there any thoughts? What are you thinking about, you know, like at the moment? So, uh, and then the person say, yeah, like, you know, I've, I think, you know, this, this and that and say, okay, look, you know, good. So like, are there any images that you see? Like, you know, is there anything that's coming on your inner screen? You know, like when you, uh, when you speak about your feelings and, you know, like, and the thoughts and, you know, like, are there any images that pop up? And, uh, okay, like, you know, you have this, you have that, um, you have the feelings, you have the, the thoughts, you have, uh, probably the images. What does that all mean to you in relation to your topic? So, and then, you know, like when the process develops, you know, like we go to the next step and, you know, like I continue asking the person, you know, like what's happening now. And um, it's very interesting, you know, but it, it, uh, it happens to me, like, you know, all the time, uh, the, those images that I start, for example, you know, getting in the beginning, sometimes, you know, those images, they transform. Okay. Like, you know, th th then I see more details to that image and I say, oh, like, you know, and that's now it means that to me. 
it's uh, those images they're very me metaphorical you know like sometimes you know people something uh, see something very uh, straightforward but mm -hmm. sometimes you know like we see uh, i don't know like you know probably some animals or um, uh probably uh, i don't know like some cartoons or something but it means something to us so that there is a metaphor that is behind that image and it's somehow related to the topic we're working on okay. so what we are doing we're decoding you know that information that we're receiving and transforming it so like basically what happens in the paper on the paper the, uh, it's the projection of what we have in our brain so first of all when we start working on the topic and we start building you know those neural connections you know like there are different algorithms in neurographica you know like and i use different ones depending okay. on what on on the on the topic you know of uh, uh you know that the person comes with the, you know the level you know like of um let's say pain or like in the level of personal growth so like i choose the algorithm that is uh, that would work best you know for that person you know like today and um and then uh we start you know like working and you know like, and i continue asking you know like you know like keeping track of what's happening and uh, then for example the if a person is stuck and doesn't understand what's happening that's why i'm there like you know to guide you know through the process and try and uh, that person to understand and decode what all of those things mean to him or to her uh, at each stage at each stage of the of the process mm -hmm. and um and you know like it can be very emotional of course you know like you know to be to be honest you know with myself you know, uh, like i mentioned I, I was like you know years ago i was in the therapy I, and um even though like all my uh topics you know i came with uh, to the therapy they were emotional for me but i never even shed a tear mm -hmm. <laughs> yes and there's but once i got into neurographica into studying neurographica you know like, i mean you know of uh, for the first half a year I was uh, studying neurographica and you know doing the practice I was crying over my drawings and you know <laughs> I was I, I like I was just sitting there with myself uh following the pro like you know through the process you know doing the self-coaching and uh, um writing you know thesis on my cases and and I was talking to myself you know with my rational voice you know like why are you crying yeah so, like you know what's it? like you know, I couldn't understand it you know but yeah. but you know like I the, as uh, I understood, of course, that was the process of releasing, releasing, yes. you know, what, what's, what's inside, like, you know, probably some of those things that, you know, I like, couldn't release, you know, during the therapy, but that worked on me, like, you know, <laughs> neurographica worked on me. And I was yeah. just saying, okay, like, I'm fine, whatever, like, you know, if I need to cry, I need to cry. Yeah. So, but it, it happens, uh, you know, during the sessions, you know, like, and happens quite often because, you know, like when we get you know, so deep, you know, on certain levels, on uh, subconscious and like, unconscious levels, you know, like, yeah, like it, people release, you know, like all, uh, all the, the, those feelings. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like, I, yeah, it, I should say, like, you know, it's, um, it, it happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but, you know, like, it's, uh, it's a process. And, uh, and I mean, uh, uh, when that happens, you know, when that happened to me, and though, like, even though, like, I was asking those questions, like, yeah, there, there, there is no good reason to cry. <laughs> like, you know, I was trying yes. to convince myself there, but uh, it's uh, if that needs to happen, that it needs to happen, yeah. uh, and we we need to give space to ourselves, uh, ourselves, you know, like for um, for this, uh, yeah. and and I know that uh, um, sometimes you know people get embarrassed about that that you know suddenly they start crying you know like and uh, it's uh and i also i can relate to that because and you know, i guess that that was one of the reasons i couldn't do it in therapy myself yeah. because i was thinking okay it's embarrassing you know like why would i cry so it's just like you know, i can manage i can manage you know my emotions you know like <laughs> yeah. so, and and yeah and what i'm hearing there is that even if it's a safe space as you said a safe space for people to be able to release and that will be really comforting and reassuring to people who might have some skepticism about like you you had yourself as to how is this going to work so you now i'm i'm curious are there any hesitations or common skepticism that people have when they first approach you any fears any doubts that come up for them uh yeah like um 
norm normal it is, you know, like uh, um, because you no, know, well, people want to, of course, know like what's the uh, like you know what's the process, and um, but as as I mentioned, you know, like I, I can speak a lot, a lot about that, but until people try, they don't really understand what it is. But I guess I it's like with any with any other practice, uh, like when w we like you know we all heard you know I guess about hypnosis, right? Uh, but we don't understand, you know, the power of it and what it can do until we experience it in ourselves. And, you know, yeah, people say, like, you know, okay, like, I don't really get it. But, you know, like, people who are very curious, mm -hmm. they will just go and try it. And they say, okay, like, and I always tell people, you know, it's, you, you can just, um, you can just go and try it, you know, like, you know, come with an open mind and see, like, you know, what it does for you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because you know this is how i approached neurographica you know like when i went there like you know as my last resource <laughs> as i thought at that time of course you know there are more things you know like i could have tried uh, but uh um, i went there and said okay like you know I'm, i can uh, i can just have an open mind and see like you know what it is about and then i can make my own judgment mm. so, uh, and then and this is what i also tell people all right you know like if um you can try it so just uh, do not have any judgments before you go into it okay so, yes. and and then and then while you're in the process you know just try and follow the process while i'm guiding you so um and you know like i i, I tell people you know like i learned it from one of my teachers and mentors uh um he he says you know something and actually i, put, I like i also tell it to people because i think it's brilliant uh, i guarantee your results if you put your work in Yes. Because, because I know that you know people like, neurographic is a powerful method, but I cannot do the work for other people. You know, yes. like, I can guide them, but if they're not willing to put their work in, and you know follow that guidance and come with an open mind, so like you know, okay, I can do as much as guiding them, but if they're resisting, you know, what I'm doing, <laughs> then then the results would be different. Yeah. yeah. So, sorry. You were going to continue. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. What I was going to ask then for people who are listening, what do you do with this wonderful graphic afterwards? Once you've finished, you've got your masterpiece, what then happens? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first of all, uh, you know, um, people do do it, like, you know, what I do uh, for the next, uh, for several days, you know, like after finished, you know, some like working on uh, on a topic. So I, um, I put it, you know, either on my fridge or somewhere where I can see it. So then, because, you know, when I see that, uh, my drawing, so like, I reinforce there is neural connections that I created. So like, I need to have it, you know, somewhere like, you know, in, um, you know, somewhere around me. So like, and, you know, I would spend like maybe like you know, 30 seconds a minute, you know, like I would look at it. So like, and then I would remember, okay, like, you know, this is what it meant to me. Like, you know, this is what color, you know, that I, Mm -hmm. um assigned you know that meaning to that color because you know, actually the neurographica is a is a way to code information yeah so like and we and we do it in different uh like you know uh, different levels and one of the ways you know to code information is color using color and uh and then when i look at those drawings and say okay that color meant this to me and that color that meant this to me and sometimes you know i also i like to uh, close my eyes and you know like with my hand go over you know there is neurographic lines okay. and I kind of feel you know I don't know maybe it's just my feeling <laughs> but I feel like you know those neural connections they're firing in my brain so like and I start remembering those um those images that you know like I um, I, I saw while I was doing the, the like you know, I was making the drawing mm -hmm. and the what I was thinking so um for the first, you know, like a couple of days and you know, three days, maybe like a week, you know, like I, I like to keep it, you know, like uh, close by and give the same advice you know, to, to people. But I know um, it's my clients, but I also uh, know that some people, you know, like to um, to put them in frames. Mm -hmm. put in, uh, and you know, they like put on the wall and um, yeah, like, you know, because it looks like art. Yes. Uh, so, and, and it looks beautiful. And uh 
yeah, like, you know, I, I see, like, you know, some of my clients, you know, like, you know, I, I do not have, you know, those uh, on my walls, mm-hmm. <laughs> my work, but I see, like, you know, some, uh, some people do, like, you know, my clients, you know, like, you know, like, you know, they put them on the wall and because they like to have them there. Yeah. And it's, it's very common that, uh, that uh, people, their best works, uh, it's something that is like, you know, really, really big for them, you know, mm-hmm. they frame it and put it on the wall. So, wow. Yeah. That's amazing because it's just a nice visual image of also that person's journey, their personal growth. And it can be really great just to have that really visual. And there might be certain colors, I suppose, that jumped out to you where you think, oh, I might incorporate that color somewhere else in my house because it really symbolizes Mm. something important to me. So, for example, let's say there's somebody who's had numerous failed dating experiences, relationships, and they come to you with a topic of dating or they come to you with a topic of relationships they can use that one graphic could they to keep bouncing back into um if they needed to is that my correct understanding or do you have to do another graphic for each experience uh yeah like you know well first of all like you know not to have uh like you know uh i mean you know for let's say it couldn't for some people uh it probably wouldn't be one drawing you know like it's um it depends, uh, like, you know, not, not just to, um, to say, like, okay, like, you know, you make one drawing, you know, like, once on topics so, and then, and everything is solved, you know, for you. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's different for all people, you know, like, you know, for some people need, you know, like, um, more than one drawing, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe 10. Okay. So, yeah. uh, so it depends on how, um, Let's say how difficult the situation for them is and how the pro- because you know like we're different in how we process things yes. and uh and it can i don't know like you know, on one topic you know i think you know i drew 40 drawings in oh. uh, uh yeah huh. <laughs> so and um in your graphic it's called you know working on the case oh, okay so, so because you know like you can uh, and you can you consider that that your case is closed Mm-hmm. When you feel that you solved, you know, like everything that, you, uh, and you can go freely and leave, you, you know, like you know, you're not attached to that topic anymore. Yes, so yes. it's it's okay. So and um, for some people, uh, and I, and I had you know clients like that, you know, after one drawing, they would be doing you know like you know uh, incredible things, you know, and but you know, I say I tell people, you know, it it happens, you know, it can happen and it happens. But it only means that that person has already worked on that topic for a certain period of time and collected, you know, uh, information, transformed already some neural connections. And they, the, probably that was just the last touch, you know, that the person needed, you know, like that push, you mm-hmm. know, like, uh, and then everything, you know, uh, all the puzzle, you know, got together, like, and everything, you know, like everything is fine. But it doesn't it doesn't mean that another person will have exactly the same experience. No. Uh, and then, I don't know, let's say maybe you need only one drawing. So like, but you know, even after one drawing, you already move forward. You discover so much mm-hmm. and you can have a series of those drawings and say, okay, this is my case of relationship case. I yeah. have, you know, like five drawings and you can see the development, you know, like because uh, since we encode, like, encode the information in each drawing, and each time we draw on the same topic, the drawings will be totally different. Different in colors, combination of colors, different, you know, like in how we draw lines. Like, you know, you would be amazed, but you will see the development, like visually, you will see the development, how things change in your mind. So, and I find it fascinating. So, uh, like, you know, some of say, like, you could have an exhibition, you know, like, and how I... <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was thinking you could have, like, an art gallery. <laughs> you hurry with different images. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, art gallery, okay, like, you know, how I worked on my relationship, you know, like, and it's uh, it's the whole process. And, you know, like, when I, I'm talking about that myself, you know, like, I think oh, that would be an amazing thing to do. Yes. So, like, you know, okay, uh, take your pain, you know, like, you know, put it in art, you know, oh. and you know, like, and then uh, you, you transform, you know, into something, you know, different, you know, like something that works for you. 
and you can make an exhibition you know like out of it so it's amazing yeah it's <laughs> amazing and are you fair in finding because that's a very creative way to express yourself and that can bring us into our feminine energy as well as women mm-hmm. to be able to creatively express ourselves in that way are you finding that um many of your clients tend to be women or is it quite split what's your ratio there would you say uh mostly women yeah because now I, I, I think naturally women are more open you know to that kind of experience mm. and uh you know like investing in a time actually in the process uh but you know like i have experience with uh, with men as well and it, it's it's very different it's it's very different from uh, like you know from women but, but it's actually it's, it, it's been um those uh those experiences i had with men they, they, they were they were so interesting you know like yeah. it, it was uh, uh like a different type of uh, conversation you know yeah. it was um it was more like uh yeah why do you do that you know what's that <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah. Like, so that it, it was like you know it was more like of a discussion and you know like all that skepticism you know like i'm not yes. serious and no like i want to do it that way mm. so it, it, it's more like you know this uh i don't know like i need to assert myself that this is how i want that so like i need to do it that way so it, it, it was um and I was like, okay, like you know, I'm no in no position to uh, in, to argue. So like, mm-hmm. and this is not my like, you know, this is not what I need to do. Like, I don't need to argue with the with the clients. You know, like it's uh, this is not the guiding process. And say, okay, like you know, fine, this mm-hmm. is this is all fine. You know, like y- you you're free to do what you need to do. Yeah. And um, but uh, would it be okay for you to explain? You know, like why you're doing that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like and uh, and then you know like when they would start explaining you know yeah because uh, it's this and it's that and because I see myself you know like you know I'm in the center you know like and the world is like you know just turning around me yeah. <laughs> so, and and I say okay like you know that's fine that's a good explanation I I understand it mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I can you know just give you some remarks you know like you know on like you know my thoughts on that if that's okay for you. So, and then you make your own decision, you know, like how you want to continue. So, and, and I would explain, you know, like what it means if that person does it that way from the point of view of Neurographica. So like what it means uh, to have like, you know, why, um, well, what's probably better, you know, to, to um, uh, have another approach. Mm-hmm. And um, so, but it's up to you, entirely yeah. up to you to decide because it's your process. So as long as you're explaining to yourself what you're doing, so like, why you're doing that? That's okay. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember it was you know this masterclass, and you know that uh, the guy he um, he explained to me like you know why he wanted he didn't want to use any colors you know like in his drawing. He said no like you know that's what I do like you know I don't want to have any colors you know. Uh, and uh, I explained to him what it means you know like if you do not uh, put any colors in your drawing. But it was it was the first time in my life, you know, like the first time experience, you know, why, like that somebody didn't want to use colors. <laughs> and I explained to him, you know, what it meant. And I told him, okay, like, but it's fine. So, um, you know what it means. Your process, mm-hmm. you decide. And then um, by uh, by the end of the masterclass, you know, like uh, it was online. So he showed me the drawing and he put colors in it. <laughs> no, because okay he processed the information yes. and he decided to try it yeah and uh, and see like you know what changes and actually the results for him were um amazing because you know like the next uh he was there with his wife and the next day uh she told me oh like you know this is what happened for him you know like you know, some uh, like you know there was you know some situation um work-wise that couldn't uh, couldn't be resolved you know like for a long time uh, and then suddenly it got resolved, you know, like just the same evening, you know, like uh, he, he got a call and, you know, like, and, um, and then th- things started moving yes. and, uh, uh, and then, uh, she told me, yeah, like, you know, it's amazing. And he, 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 he told her like, you know, okay, like you can say that that's, that worked, you know? And then it was also funny, like his wife sent me, you know, some, um, uh, pictures of him sitting and you know making drawings you know with colors <laughs> yeah he really got he, he really got into this because he realized <laughs> that this is how you get the resources mm. you know like you open resources in the coloring 
you know, like on that pyramid again, you know, like of consciousness, you know, like coloring is one of the steps, but we do not, uh, we got it, uh, we get to this, you know, a certain step when we are already, you know, quite deep into mm -hmm. our unconscious. So this is, these are the resources we get from our unconscious, you know, activate with the help of color. Yeah. So, and when people do not want to do that, I just explain it to them, you know, like what, why, what we're doing, you know, like why we're using color uh, mm -hmm. at a certain step uh, of the process, because we're activating the resources that are um, on the very deep unconscious level. So mm -hmm. the coloring in uh, neurographica is called archetyping. So okay. like we're getting to this level of archetypes. So which is like in a very, very ancient, ancient level of, uh, oh. you know, getting resources. So, and um, uh, anyway, uh, so when I explained it to him, you know, apparently he processed that information and he saw how powerful it can be <laughs> because he saw the results yeah. in life. So, oh. and uh, yeah, so, and uh, men are very different, you know, like from, because women uh, tend mostly like, you know, yeah, we follow the process. We see, like, you know, how that works, and we just, uh, yeah, like, we get into this uh, state, you know, like, meditative state, you know, like, we connect to our, like, you know, feminine side, you know, like, we, you know, we just intuitively, I think, you know, more, like, you know, like to do those things, but for men, it's just, uh, yeah, they need to, they need to discuss, they need to, uh, like, you know, they, they need to say their point of view. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just there. as you said you can share it it's unpacking it and then the explanation as to why this process works the way it works and I love that success story that you have shared there because what it really demonstrates is the power of being open-minded yes you might have some skepticism you might have some obstacles your way but if you just allow yourself to embrace the transformative method that it is you can get the results Absolutely. and it's always lovely when you get the feedback from somebody else like the partner to say look it really is going down a tree <laughs> so thank you so much for that share and it just feels like whoever is listening to this and there will be so many people listening to this episode thinking i am completely curious about this so we are going to share how you can reach out to alessio as well to explore this process even more so because it's so so powerful so i really do appreciate you going into the detail that you have in terms of what it is because it was completely new to me before <laughs> station i was like what is neurographica and how can this help people and particularly when it comes to dating and relationships i can completely see because you have that first-hand experience as to how that helps you so i wondered you now you, you spoke about having some failed quote unquote failed relationship experiences yeah. what have been some of the, the top three lessons that you've learned maybe from those experiences that you've had either about yourself or relationships in general well I guess uh one you know like the one that is on the top <laughs> that I learned is to be um crystal clear about your wants needs and desires you know like when you get into the relationship so uh you know I am um, um, how would I put it? You know, like all my relationships that failed in the past, it was because you know like, I was I didn't I was hiding you know a lot of information from from my uh, from my partners when I was getting into the relationship. I was putting that emotional makeup, mm. you know, you know, say like you know, and I was pretending, you know, to be somebody different, you know, so they would like me. So mm. like I, I had you know that. Um, in my head, you know, like that, that thing, you know, like that it, it, to be liked by someone, I need to, I need to pretend, you know, mm -hmm. like, and, I, and, um, and I didn't express, you know, like my needs, you know, desires and, uh, um, wants, you know, to, to that partner in a clear way. Okay. So, and then, uh, and then, you know, like, yeah, it wasn't, uh, like it, it was not, just because of that but it was one of the main reasons you know why relationships failed because one way or another those things you know they come up to the surface and you know like why when the relationship develops you start you know uh, speaking about what you want uh, mm -hmm. one way or another what you need you know like how you want to be treated well if you get to that you know like sometimes I even didn't get to that because i was still you know like wearing this emotional makeup you know like yeah well like, that's fine mm -hmm. so like that's still okay even though it wasn't um and 
and it's not just because it was their fault, you know, like uh, the um, that they treated me like not the way I wanted uh, to be treated, but it's just because I never mentioned that. And as mm -hmm. I said, you know, I was hiding that information because I thought they wouldn't like me for that. Okay. So, uh, so and uh, but it was just the other way around. So mm -hmm. like it, uh, it's just uh, it worked against me actually because you know, like if I would come up with like with all that information and be crystal clear about what I want, you know, like how I want to be treated, you know, like how what um, what I desire from that relationship. So the things would work differently. Or maybe like I wouldn't even go into those relationships because they would tell me from the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, like, no, like, you know, that's not, the, it's not going to work for me. So, but I was, um, yeah. So like, I was like, in, like in a totally different person, you know, like in that aspect. And this is how I learned to be like, you know, that's, yeah. I, uh, I thought, you know, this is how relationships, you know, work, you know, like mm -hmm. you need to make, you know, compromises, but you know, like it was, it wasn't even compromise. You can compromise, you know, who's going to take out the garbage, you know, yes. on Sunday, you know, <laughs> you yeah. and me, but, but you don't compromise on, on your values mm -hmm. uh, in, um, in a relationship, you know, then this is like, you know, I, for me, it was like, you know, number one, you know, like be clear like, on, on your values, wants, needs, desires, and open, like, you know, speak about that, you know, like from the beginning. So mm -hmm. because uh, if that uh, not if that doesn't is not present, so well one way or another, you know, like it will come up in that relationship. Yeah. And in my case, you know, like uh, that was a big, uh, like you know, one of the big reasons, you know, why a relationship failed. <laughs> so yeah. relatable, so relatable, um, Alessia, because not having that clarity on our wants, our needs, our desires, as you said, that means that we're not really able to uphold personal boundaries. No personal healthy boundaries of ourselves and also with other people so getting crystal clear on that and i know you help your clients to get clarity to understand more of who you are so that you can be your authentic self and be vulnerable so you know we, you were obviously being blocked by being vulnerable and being yourself mm. your true self did you discover what it was that was holding you back from being your true self and putting on this emotional makeup was it a legacy experience that you've had? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, Teresha, it was like, you know, like a lot of things, you know, together, you know, like that I, I discovered during, you know, like my therapy when, uh, like when I started I working with those things. Yeah. You know, it's uh, like, you know, lots of components, but, you know, like, yeah, it was, um, I would say like, you know, the, um, of course, the, those, uh, the relationships I saw, like, you know, from, like, you know, how the relationship worked in my family, Oh yeah. The, yeah. yeah, like you know, you, you tend, you know, like you know, to to take that as an example. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and anything, you know, like yeah, this is this is how it should be, I guess. You know, like you, you don't have any other example. You know, like you get it from the family, like you know, my parents, my grandparents. You know, like it's like, well, it's uh, in our family, it was more like um, it would get uh, if things would get more like you know more like. In, a bit emotional so that would go like no 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 like we don't speak about that you know like it's just like you know let's let's put it aside you know <laughs> come down so yeah. you know yeah come it's, down. It's, uh, yeah the mask uh, cont contain it in yourself you know like you know you manage and otherwise you know like you know things things are fine so and um so like any time i felt you know like in um in my childhood you know like when we would uh want as children to express you know like what they think and you know they like, yeah, so we would be told, okay, like you know, not let's not get emotional about that. So and uh, and this is, but of course, I didn't realize those things, you know, like but you know, it's just it it, uh, it becomes so unconscious, you know, that oh. program that the way we are running, you know, as we're adults. So like I was just get I would get in the relationships, you know, with this program, you know, like I need to yes. contain it to myself. And yeah. I like and and try and manage, you know, like in any ways I can. So, but I don't need to bother, you know, that uh, person, my partner, with all of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it it was just uh, yeah, like you know, a lot of those things. And um, um, and then you know, like another thing, you know, that came uh, came also that I uh, like you know, one of the the three things <laughs> it was trust. <laughs> You know, like the the trust. You know, like that. I um, I was trying to get. You know, like from uh, from partners. You know, like and for me at that time, trust meant not betrayal. Uh huh. So, 
<laughs> so then, and, uh, but surprisingly enough, you know, like I know why it, it was like that now. So like I, oh, I would always attract those partners in my life that would betray me. Yeah. So, uh, so because I was so desperate seeking, you know, like that opposite thing. And I was trying to um, unconsciously, like, try and test them. Are they going to betray me? Uh -huh. Ooh, yes. <laughs> a bit of self sabotage going on there. Uh, uh, yeah, like, and I would self sabotage, you know, like, because I already had that program in my head that they're going to betray me and abandon me. Mm -hmm. And it's also the program that I was running uh, from my, was coming from my very early childhood yeah. uh, that I, I didn't know about, but it was, uh, it was apparently like, I wouldn't say it was like it was a very traumatic experience, but I perceived it as a, as a child, the traumatic experience. Yes, and you know that program of abandonment was running, you know, like in uh, like you know, for, for, for for all my relationships. So yes. like, and I was you know sabotaging it all the time. So I was looking yeah. for like you know trust, but at the same time I was not trusting the, them. So like and I was trying to see like and test are they going to uh, to betray me. Yeah. So like, I think, and then the, when they would do that, they said like, "Yes, I knew that." Exactly. Confirmation <laughs> bias. Confirmation yes. bias kicked in. That's what it, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew, I knew it. that she shouldn't have trusted him. Yeah. But it, it was, um, it was just you know the, uh, those things, and um, then I, also what I learned, you know, like from my relationships when I understood, you know, that program, you know, like and why I was running, you know, like that program as well. So that. Uh, you know, th those things, you know, like you also discuss it with your partner, you know, like when uh, what trust means to you, like and how you want that trust to be expressed. And and it's again about the open communication, because mm -hmm. we all have, you know, the, those words like uh, love, trust, you know, like, um, uh, like they have all different meanings to us. So, and then we need to communicate it to the partner because, you know, like probably for him, it's something totally different. Mm -hmm. So like, this is not how he sees trust. And then like, it's again, you know, like be crystal clear about, uh, you know, your wants, needs, desires. Yes. Uh, and also how you want to be treated, mm. how you, you want to be treated in your relationship. So speak about that. And I know it's a very difficult thing. I know it's, uh, it's something that need to be needs to be practiced, mm -hmm. and uh, I was not taught to do that. You know, like when when I was growing up, I was not taught. You know, like you know that you need to speak to your partner. You need like uh, when I was uh, the, the first time I was asked that question. You know, like how would you like to be treated? I was like, what's that? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, is it like you know? Do, do I need to have a plan for that or like you know, an instruction? And I was really. Um, I would have said, uh, I was resisting that. I was like, you know, uh, can't he understand, you know, how it needs to be treated? But the thing is that, you know, like I didn't understand it myself. You know, you know, how could he, like, you know, on the other side, you know, read, you know, like, even if he could read mind, there was no instruction there, like how I need to be treated because I didn't know that myself. So, and it was, you know, such a painful, you know, learning, you know, curve for me. You know, to like, you know, I, I had to really sit, sit down and write down all those things for myself. The, and uh, once um, once I was clear about that, you know, okay, this is what I like, this is what I don't like, you know, like, and I need to speak about that. Yes. The, and this is the difficult part as well. So because then again, it comes, you know, to that, you know, okay, like I say all those things, you know, how I like things and how I don't like things. And then probably he won't like me. Yeah, so because it's it's too much to handle. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And this is where the fears and the doubts, the the validation, the acceptance, a lot of that, as you've spoken about, if you've got legacy abandonment wounds, that can impact on our attachment style and how we relate to people as we grow up. It's getting crystal clear, and the therapy that you had, what you are saying, it would feel that it helped you to get some clarity over how you communicate. With somebody in a relationship and feel comfortable to express your needs and your wants and that is so important and when you were talking there Alessia I thought wow isn't this quite a great segue because you spoke about how what trust means to somebody might be it's very personal to that person what love means to somebody is really personal to that person too so I'm really super curious as to what does love 
mean to you in a romantic context? <laughs> What's your definition of love? Um, you know, when I think about uh, the definition of love, uh, I am... Um, you know, I come up to the conclusion, you know, like there is, I cannot tie it to one word, say, okay, like, you know, like for example, oh, love is uh, the unity of, um, I don't know, soulmates or something, you know, like, um, I, I cannot really say that because, you know, like when I go back to all my relationships and, you know, like analyze them, uh, the thing that I can say that uh, in each of those relationships, love was something different to me that so I defined love in a very specific context. Okay. Context. Yeah. Uh, so, and what it was about, um, let's say, um, when we, um, I will just um, give it an, a, as an example. Um, one of the of my teachers, you know, she was um, giving a very good you know, analogy. Like, you know, I, I liked it very much. And so, like, you know, when I try to explain, so how, like, you know, I try to give you know this visual. How she would say that, you know, like when people meet each other, let's say there is me, and you know, like I am, um, you know, let's imagine me, like I'm with you know this uh, this cookie, you know, right? Mm -hmm. And one side of me is beaten off. Mm -hmm. So let's say, you know, this right side of me is beaten off to some yeah. amount. Uh, some, and then there is uh, my partner. And, you know, he's also a cookie. And for him, you know, his left side is beaten off to the same amount, you know, as mine. So when we come together, we become a whole cookie. Oh. Because, because then we complete, you know, like those sides that are beaten off. So we yeah. become one. Okay. So, but, but what happened is that how we find, you know, partners is that we have, you know, certain needs that we want to be satisfied and fulfilled in our relationships. Yeah. And, you know, this is this, this part of a cookie that is beaten off from my side and from his side. So we come and, you know, like, and I think well, I, that he's the one because, you know, for like, you know, because I see like, you know, here is something and I think, you know, okay, he's the one who can, you know, fulfill those needs for me. Yeah. So, and he thinks probably the same. So we match, you know, with those beaten off sides, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, and we start uh, mm, uh, fulfilling our needs in, those re in that relationship. And let's say like, you know, if he does a very good job and fulfills all my needs that I came, uh, came in with, uh, you know, in that relationship, so like this beaten off part starts growing so, and then it becomes and that I become, you know, a whole cookie myself. So he becomes a very, like, you know, the part that I don't need anymore. Yeah. I get new need. I get new needs, you know, like in that, in the relationship and probably he won't be able to fulfill those needs anymore. <laughs> so like we can speak about them, you know, right. We can communicate. But initially, we uh, got together as a whole cookie on total different bases, on different needs. So, and then, you know, like, let's say I would need, you know, um, a, in that relationship, I came into that relationship with the need of uh, being, um, you know, like I want to have somebody around me all the time because, you know, I had, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. um, trauma of abandonment, you know, like I want that partner to be with me all the time, you know, fulfill that need. And, you know, let's say he does that. And mm -hmm. then, you know, like I'm, I'm healing in that relationship. And then I start feeling, you know, probably that, oh, uh, he's too much. He's just too much. You know, like he's, uh, he's dependent on me all the time. He's around me all the time. So, and then I you start perceiving, uh, yeah, like I started withdrawing because I perceive him like he's a, he's a, uh, he's a codependent. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Yeah. So, but, but he was like that from the, uh, from the beginning. So, but you know, like I mean, in the beginning, yeah, I, I, I had that need to have him around me all the time. So then I become, you know, let's say that whole cookie, you know, yeah. like, because I'm, I'm growing that side. He is too much for me because you know he's, you know, he's stifling me apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, and and I get new needs uh, like that I want in a relationship, but he cannot fulfill those needs anymore. So like, and if we do not agree in our communication, how the relationship goes forward, you know, like we probably break up yes. so, and, I, and I go and uh, with the new needs to new relationship 
and start looking for a new partner. Like, yeah. you know, probably the left side of me is, you know, beaten off <laughs> and I yeah. find, you know, like another one. And uh, what I'm go- leading with that is that, you know, like when I go back, you know, to my relationships and analyze them, what I consider to be love for myself is, you know, the, the basis of love was that the fulfillment of those needs. And they mm-hmm. were different all the time. I was bringing them, you know, like if uh, they were not satisfied in the previous relationship, I would take this plus the traumas from the previous relationship, you know, mm-hmm. new needs, you know, to be satisfied. I pack it in, go to new partner. So like, and then if I feel, you know, he can do that for me, so then, you know, like I would, uh, I would call that love. Yeah, like, because, you know, like, so this, like in all relationships, you know, like how I consider love to be is the fulfillment of my needs. Okay. So, and, and, and I think, you know, it's not only me because, you know, um, uh, it, it works for many people like that. It's just that we don't really realize, you know, like uh, how we're like, you know, what we're doing <laughs> yeah. and how it's work. It's working for us. I don't know if you can relate to that or not, but I think, you know, like, mm. you know, quite some people can relate to that. Yeah. So this is what I was considering, you know, the love you know for uh, you know how i was defining love oh, but actually uh, yeah but actually uh, what i really wanted you know like in uh, in those relationships what i really really wanted you know like i think there were three things mm-hmm. i wanted you know like as i mentioned you know trust yeah. you know like i wanted to have connection with those people and i wanted to have commitment those three things you know like i always wanted to have in the relationships um and for me, like th- this is something that you know, yeah, ultimately defines a loving relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But how how I was entering those relationships, there was a different question. You know, like all those different needs I wanted to be satisfied. This is what I call love. You know, like at that wow. time. Yeah. But um, what I wanted <laughs> was exactly those th- three things: uh, like trust, uh, connection, and you know, commitment. Oh. That's going to be so relatable to people, those three components too. And I think what is great is that what you are kind of saying here is that it's an ongoing process, it's an ongoing assessment, because for each new connection that you have, whether that could be even a friendship connection or whatever that is, some of those those three components, they run. It's a common thread, though, Mm -hmm. isn't it, when it comes to our relationship? Trust, (laughs) connection, and also just that commitment from somebody. That is such a powerful share. I don't believe that any of my guests have explained it so visually as to how you have explained it there. So that was such a beautiful share. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you opening up and sharing that. I think a lot of people got cookie images now in their mind. You want the cookie, go eat the cookie. (laughs) Thank you so much for that. We are going to bring this beautiful conversation to an end it's been such a wonderful wonderful conversation thank you so much alessia neurographic art is going to be completely new to some people some people might have heard of it but now they want to explore it even more so and your wonderful personal shares so i want to thank you for being so open and vulnerable with us all here today thank you would you be so kind enough to leave the audience with one key takeaway to help them on their journey of love, life, and relationships. Yeah, so um, just um, um, how would I say it? You know, I, I would say it also to myself, <laughs> same as uh, like you know to the to the people uh, you know who are going to listen to that. You know, like yeah, um, do not settle for less. You know, like you know, go for what you want. You know, like if you like you know the the thing you know to understand, like you know the main thing is to understand what you want. And, you know, do not settle for less. You know, if this is what you want in life, you know, this is what the relationship you want. So, like, you know, yeah, it's, uh, you know, go for that relationship, you know, look, uh, like, you know, and, you know, th- there is, you know, like a chance for you to have that relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, never, never settle for less. You know, like, as I mentioned, you know, emotional makeup doesn't mm-hmm. help. <laughs> yeah. And I love that term. I have to say emotional makeup because many of us are, wearing a, an emotional makeup and it's really unpacking the reasons behind it as you said before there could even be a secondary game that we have that keeps us from moving forward now, what what keeps us quote unquote stuck you know what's the advantage of staying in exactly the same place where we are well it's time to unpack that and neurographica will be the way forward thank you for that lovely life lesson that you have shared with mm-hmm. us here alicia where can people find you 
Uh, where are you hanging out on social media? And do you have any events coming up at all that you would like to share? Um, people can find me on Instagram. So, like, you know, you can now uh, we can uh, you can put you know that link. Um, and you know, sir, not so long ago, like I opened, um, I created a group on um, on Facebook. Uh, so it's very new, uh, and I'm trying, you know, to um, gather people, you know, to, to build a community that uh, people would come and, uh, you know, they learn a little bit more about Neurographica, create <clears throat> weekly challenges there, uh, and uh, so that people can explore Neurographica and, you know, share their drawings and, you know, like ask questions and, uh, you know, like I can uh, help them, you know, to, uh, on, um, you know, to explore Neurographica and help them on their journey. Mm -hmm. they can um yeah like find me there as well join that group and um um there is a, an event a master class you know called a dream fulfillment um uh, master class uh, for dreams you know like 2024 mm -hmm. uh, that is coming up uh, next weekend uh, so uh, and i'm doing it in collaboration with um uh, with an NLP master, so like we take take two powerful, you know, methods, uh, neurographic and NLP <laughs> together is going to be very powerful, and uh, I think we are going to repeat it. Uh, so it's um, I uh, like those announcements are on uh, on Instagram. So it's uh, like you know, um, there there will be a schedule, you know, for master classes and are coming up. <laughs> That's so good. So you can see the importance of following Alessia because if you're not able to attend this event coming up, hopefully there'll be some more scheduled. So thank you so much. As you said, I'm going to drop all of the links into the show notes so people know how to find you easily and effortlessly. Again, Alessia, thank you so much for your time, for your attention and for your energy today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Teresha, for having me over, like and inviting me. It's it's been amazing, you know, and uh, I really, really like you know to share that information with people because uh, I really want people to know about that method. And there there is you know an opportunity to you know to to grow, you know, to to heal, and you know it's just uh, you know so something new to try and you know like i want people to know about that so like i'm really grateful to be to be a part of your or your podcast so it's been it's been amazing thank you. thank you it's been a wonderful share and for everybody who has listened to this wonderful conversation today i want to thank you for your time for your attention and for your energy and until the next episode mm -hmm. take great care of yourself and others too 